Hello and welcome to another episode of the Decode Podcast. On the show, we talk all things headless WordPress and modern web development. And we're back this week uh, with another um, great episode. Last week was a tearjerker. We said goodbye to uh, Will Johnston, who had spent a lot of time and contributed um, a lot to the podcast. Uh, but Will has uh, taken a, a new role. So we said goodbye to Will. But what's the phrase? Um, uh, every, I'm going to quote the, the fastball song here. Um, every new beginning is part of some other beginnings end. Is that how it goes? But anyways, with that fabulous segue, um, we want to introduce Grace Erickson, who's, uh, somewhat new to the developer relations team at WP engine. And I'm thrilled to be having, uh, to be joining us, um, going forward on the podcast. So Grace, you know, very warm welcome to you to you know, WP Engine to our team, but also to the podcast. Thank you so much for, for being on with us. Yeah, it's great to be here. Uh, so we thought we'd use this episode as an opportunity to um, get, get to know Grace a bit better. Um, just hear the web developer origin story for how, you know, Grace got into um, coding and building things on the web, which, which I always love. It's super interesting to hear, hear, you know, different people's kind of paths to, to, um, you know, uh, working on the web. So, uh, so we'll get to know Grace a bit better in that way, uh, but also use this opportunity to, you know, learn from somebody and hear from somebody who has experience in uh, working with a number of other technologies, but only in recent months has been, you know, thrown into the deep end of working with um, WordPress as a headless CMS. So we'll talk about maybe, you know, conceptions that Grace had about like what working with WordPress as a headless CMS would be like versus what it actually is like now that she's kind of in the thick of it. and has been doing that for, for a bit of time and, and just her overall impression of that. So, so I'm looking forward to, um, to all of that. So you ready, Grace, to yes. dive in? <laughs> cool. Uh, so let's start with, with that origin story then. Um, so if you could just you know, tell us about um, how you, you know, got into doing web development in, in general. Yeah, I was always pretty interested in like STEM fields um, and I wasn't really sure like what what exact area I wanted to go into. Um, but, you know, a lot of times, like I would go to summer camps or something like that, and I would like be the only girl there. Um, and so I think it was kind of hard for me to, to really find my place in technology um, until I got a little older and there started being organizations like dedicated to teaching um, younger girls how to code or other people of marginalized gender. Um, and so I went to one of those kind of camps in eighth grade. Um, and that is where I first heard about Flywheel. And that is also where I decided that I wanted to pursue computer science. Um, so I switched my high school plans. I went to a technology magnet school for high school. And I guess the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's super cool. I'm so glad that you, you know, found that camp and it sparked you know, the other I guess the interest was always already there, as you said, but I guess just like stoked the flame or whatever and, and, uh, and got you even more into it. Uh, that's great to hear. Um, what was the last thing you said about you, you, uh, you joined, like what school was it? Um, it was Omaha North high school. Okay. High school. And then was there another like program that you mentioned? Yeah. And then in high school, um, Omaha girls who code kind of like was founded during my sophomore year um, and eventually Sweet. the founders of those of that group split off and created their own nonprofit called Mystery Code Society um, so they could come up with their own curriculum and kind of teach more advanced things. Yeah that is super cool and as I understand it you have um, a role on the board right of Mystery Code Society? Yeah yeah so I, awesome. I was a student in Mystery Code Society all through high school um, I started TAing for some of the younger younger classes in high school too, um, and then I I took a year off when I went to college, but I really missed the group. So I am mm. now on the board. Um, I'm the vice president, and I do a lot of curriculum writing for them. So it's been really great to like give back to the organization that I feel like helped me find my place in technology. Yeah, that is awesome. That's one of the reasons we wanted to snatch up, you know, Grace and add her to the DevRel team here. Cause somebody who is, you know, has the, um, passion for not only coding, but also like knowledge sharing, right. And, and, um, helping train other people is, uh, 
is uh that's like the one two punch you know or the <laughs> the combo that you want for for a developer relations person so so i feel like you're very well suited for that and i'm sure also for the you know your role with the mystery code society um so the the um the folks who the students who participate in mystery code society like what age is is it all high school or how does that work um it's middle and high school so we take middle anyone school. fifth through 12th grade oh that's cool is it um all working on the on the web or do they do any like mobile apps or is it certain languages as well yeah we have a couple different like tracks um we have like web development which is like obviously like html css JavaScript. Yeah. Um, we also have like a JavaScript games class. Um, we have some C sharp and C sharp games cl um, classes, mm -hmm. and we're we're working on creating a mobile app curriculum too right now. Not oh, out yet, very... but <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that is super cool. Um, so so yeah, you've you know had quite the history um, doing that stuff like through uh, high through high school and through your your schooling. So. Um, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about like what tech you're most familiar with. Like what have you, you done, done and, you know, launched, um, real world projects using. Yeah. Um, all of my internship experience and everything was using rails and Vue. Um, so those are definitely like the, the languages and frameworks that I'm the most comfortable with. I've done a little bit of a lot of other things like through college, yeah. um, and just side projects, but definitely I, before this role, I would have definitely like called myself a rails and view developer. Nice. Yeah. I, I remember, you know, earlier in my career, like not, not knowing what different languages were good for, you know, I would just read that like Ruby on rails was, you know, super hot and lots of startups were using that, but Python was also like very, very beloved. But then there's PHP, which is like a huge percentage of the web is that and tons of jobs are in that. I'm like, okay, but what do I, what do I do? Which <laughs> yeah, there's do so I many options. Do? Yeah. Yeah. Which can be kind of daunting, but it's also kind of cool if you think about it, you know, if there's, what if there's like only like one or two languages and that was it, everyone just used those. It would be more boring. I think, right. It's cool yeah. that there's that there's the variety out there so i think it's really interesting that like every intro to computer science class teaches java because i think if that had been my first programming language i would have been like i don't know if i want to do this anymore yeah <laughs> yeah i know i know i've heard that it's uh, it's in, in large part because like these big enterprise companies a lot of times are donors to the programs and they're the ones who you know get the students get internships to go work at you know, Oracle or these like gigantic companies who are many of their systems like were written in Java and are still running Java. So that's needed, yeah. but yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It seems like that. Um, it's not really the favorite language, especially of the like open source web dev communities. I'm a part of, you know, it seems to be more people gravitate toward, uh, other languages more so for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, cool. Um, so you mentioned that uh, you had an internship with Flywheel, and it, for anybody listening who doesn't know, like Flywheel um, started as a uh, a separate uh, web hosting company. It was really geared towards um, the design community, folks who used WordPress um, as their CMS, and uh, just had you know really nice looking d designs for for clients that they would launch, and needed um, a really easy to use um, and you know, reputable web host. Uh, so uh, Flywheel kind of rose to prominence and filled that um, that void. And one of the things it's most famous for, in my mind, is um, for its uh, uh, local by Flywheel development environment, which um, it originally started under a different name. It was Pressmatic, I believe the name was, and then Flywheel acquired that and continued developing that, and it just became my favorite local development tool for WordPress sites, but also, you know, many, many others. So it was a very valuable tool. I'm sure many, you know, of our listeners recognize. Uh, and now as of, you know, a couple of years ago, um, WP Engine acquired uh, Flywheel. So now the two have kind of joined, joined forces. Um, so maybe it was like fortuitous or meant to be Grace that you would find your way back to <laughs> the WP Engine. But, but anyways, tell us about um, the Flywheel internship, kind of like how that uh, came about and, and what kind of work that you did while you were there? 
Yeah, so like I said, I first heard about Flywheel in eighth grade, and I like decided then and there, like I was going to work at Flywheel, like no matter what. Um, and so really like throughout throughout my later years of high school and my first year of college, that was like really my focus. I had like Flywheel like posters and like news clippings up on my wall in my dorm room. And I was just like, what can I do to like make sure that I can get there? Um, and then yeah, so fall freshman year of college, I had like other internship offers, but I was like, mm -hmm. I really, really wanted to go to Flywheel, um, but their applications weren't open yet. Um, so I just sent a DM to the head of the people team on LinkedIn. And I was right. like, I would really like it to work for you. Can awesome. I please you. interview yeah. early? Um, and he was like, sure. <laughs> and so I, that's how it happened. And then um, I stayed there for a year about a year and a half I think and I was oh. on um, the team that created add-ons for the um, web hosting product so I worked on like the managed plugin updates add-on um, the performance insights add-on the slack add-on um, and that was also all in rails and view um, and yeah I just had an amazing time and really most of the time was post acquisition. Um, I got there mm. and about a month in it was acquired. Um, so I, I guess I interned with WP Engine too, even though it was gotcha. still a little, still more separate then, but yeah. Right. That's super cool. It seems like a fun project too, to me to build out some of the add-ons. Um, how are they Ruby on Rails? Like, I, I don't know if I fully understand that. Cause I think like local is an, is an electron app right so it's written in javascript and it uses docker containers for like each of your wordpress sites so i figure the um i figure the the add-ons for it would be similar to like browser extensions where they have to be written in javascript is that not the case though how does that work um so these add-ons were different than the local add-ons oh, these were okay. add-ons like that you could add on to your subscription plan with flywheel and it was in in your like web portal got it okay my mistake yeah Oh, very cool. All right. So, um, so you got interested in tech, did a, did a fair amount of that in school, including getting involved with mystery code society, um, did the flywheel internship and then, uh, what came next after that? Like, when did you, I guess we'll, um, bring things, you know, back around to WordPress, if that's cool with you, since it's a headless WordPress yeah. um, specific show. So what was your like first exposure with even as a user? to WordPress? And then how did you, you know, find your way to, to WP Engine and now, you know, um, you know, land at this role, uh, working with it as, uh, as a headless CMS? Yeah. Um, so while I was at Flywheel, I started doing some kind of like content management, um, web development kind of stuff for some local nonprofits in Omaha that already used Flywheel as their host, but just needed someone to kind of like come in and like spruce things up, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. So the main one for that was like the Omaha Refugee Task Force website. Um, I had like connections to the group anyway. So when I saw that they were hosted on Flywheel, I was like, this would be a really great opportunity for me to like understand using WordPress since I work at a <laughs> WordPress company. Um, but that was really just content management and like setting up like the theme and like different plugins. It wasn't any any like traditional like PHP WordPress development. Um, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people, yeah, and you can get, you know, quite far if you have that, that skill set, right? There are a lot of folks out there who are, who are like theme or uh, like site builders for WordPress. They would, they wouldn't say, say they're developers so much because they don't dive into the code, but with WordPress, you know, when you can like, when you know how to get, get a site on online and then configure a theme and theme and plug in and, um, and then train your client on how to use it. Like you can, you can do quite a bit. That's why I always chuckle when, uh, people say, uh, you know, uh, when people say like, uh, when they're talking about the, the no code movement, it's a popular buzzword right now, you know, and then people chime in and say, man, I've been using WordPress for years. It's the OG, <laughs> it's the OG no code tool. Right. Um, yeah. So you had used it in that, that capacity, like, um, you know, composing together the plugins and themes and stuff, um, for that, uh, organization. So that's cool. Um, and then what about, uh, what about like WP engine? Like when you saw the, um, 
job post for like doing developer relations stuff? Like, did that appeal, appeal to you? And how did that, that all work? Yeah. Um, I was really excited about it because I mean, I really like coding and that kind of stuff, but I have also like really found a lot of enjoyment out of like building curriculum and teaching other people how to code through my extracurricular stuff. Um, so this role just kind of like felt like a good fit for everything that I was hoping for. Yeah. Awesome. That's super cool. Um, so now that you are here and have been, um, working with WordPress as a headless CMS, so not just as a user, but, you know, doing some development, um, uh, let's talk about that a bit. Like what was your perception of, you know, Word, WordPress before, especially like pairing it with a front end. So view, view JS is what you have um, a fair amount of familiarity with, you know? So if you, if I would have asked you like before um, joining us, you know, here, here at WP Engine, like, what do you think that development experience would, would be like, or would it even be possible to pair one with, with the other? What would your answer have been versus, you know, what is your answer now to that question? Yeah, I remember during one of our like engineering team meetings, um, when I was at Flywheel, we like brought up headless and they were like, we should probably start thinking about like the headless solution. And so I raised my hand in like the middle of the meeting and I was like, what is headless WordPress? Um, and they, they like explained it to me, but I just remember thinking like, I have absolutely no idea like how that would even work like I'm just gonna forget mm. that I ever heard about that and just keep doing what I'm doing um but now that I've like been here and like seen how it works like I've really been surprised at how easy it is to get set up um especially using Faust JS um mm. and local I think like there's been a lot of tooling built out um like open source and by WP Engine um that makes it really less hard than it sounds. <laughs> mm. And I know in uh, talks that you and I have had, um, I think with your early experience with WordPress, um, you knew about the, the two built-in post types, right? Posts and pages. Um, but I think you mentioned to me that you didn't uh, know at, at that time that WordPress was like um, quite so extensible, right? Where you can yeah. register your own custom post types and, and house custom data, right? Yeah, I did, definitely didn't know how flexible WordPress was as a backend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, cool. I'm so happy to hear that. Like I've been doing headless WordPress stuff for a few years and I feel like it has gotten a lot easier since I started like um, WP GraphQL existed, but it was much younger and a lot of the capabilities it, it has now like just didn't exist. And, um, and one of the things we've talked about on the podcast too, Atlas content modeler, I'm so excited for that. Cause it just like all, all the work that you would have had to do before for cobbling together different plugins to register your post types and taxonomies and fields and all this kind of stuff. And, and then expose it all in the GraphQL scheme. Like it's such a multi-step process. So, you know, tools like that, there's like a single plugin with a slick UI that does all of it. Uh, I'm really excited about So. So yeah, I'm happy you've had a good experience. And then Faust um, as well. You said that was, it's been uh, easy to work with that. Yeah, makes me feel kind of spoiled that I don't have to deal with any of those things. <laughs> yeah, well, very cool. Um, so next up, um, let's see, what do we wanna cover next? So we talked about uh, how you got like involved and how you joined the team here, um, your interest in um, coding and, and also you know sharing. Uh, with others in the community. Um, so on that note, I just want to ask, like, what are you excited about doing uh, in this role? We do quite a bit, um, and I want to do even more. You know, our team, our team, we're we're looking to grow the DevRel team here, um, but with the number of folks we have right now, we can only, you know, bite off so so much or cover so many bases or whatever. So there's lots of stuff that we want to do. But what are you most excited about between like? videos or live streams or conference talks or social media engagements, you know, um, all that stuff. What do you like to do? Um, yeah, I think I'm the most excited to kind of work on videos and um, writing some like blog posts. Um, but really, I'm excited to like learn how to do all of it. Um, 
And I think that like large scale, I really want to help make headless seem less, um, less hard to start uh, or maybe mm. to like, to like diffuse some like common misconceptions like the ones that I had, um, because I think that it's been really cool to learn about. Um, so I want to help continue to grow the community. Well, very cool. And one thing I'm realizing that we didn't touch on is um, just your thoughts on like the monolith architecture versus a decoupled ar architecture, right? Because you've done both. You've done um, with Ruby on Rails, you've done the like traditional server rendered um, websites, but you've also used Rails as a backend only that served up JSON that was then consumed by the view apps that you've built. Do I have all that correct? Yes. Cool. So yeah, so you've done both in the past and now that you've been, you know, spent a bit of time in the WordPress world, like what do you think are the like pros and cons or the trade-offs there of using, you know, WordPress as the monolith as it's, you know, traditionally been done versus this kind of new school thing that we're, we're doing and, you know, trying to train folks on, which is, you know, the, this other option of decoupling your front end and having it, you know, live separately. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think that monolithic is definitely better for speed and it's better if you don't have someone or the time yourself mm. to to understand like front end frameworks or and like why you would make certain decisions in headless um but I think that headless is is definitely more exciting from a developer point of view um and it's faster, more secure, you know, all those things. So mm. I think that, that if you have the resources and if it makes sense for, for your project, I would always, I would always choose headless, but. Yeah. And when you said traditional is faster, you meant, um, like develop the speed yeah, of development. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. I gotcha. Faster right, to right, like right. spin up. The... Yeah. I definitely agree with that. Yep. Yeah. We've talked to, I've, I've talked to folks like all over the spectrum, folks, people who say like, the idea of doing headless WordPress is stupid and it should never be done versus others who say, I would only do it this way. I'm not touching PHP and WordPress themes again, you know, and everywhere and everything in between. So um, I'm not so far to, to either extreme, you know, I'm somebody who thinks like, like you, if it's like, you know, there's the mom and pop shop down the, down the street and they need to um, get a site on the internet that has, you know, the, the the menu for the restaurant and the hours that they're open and about page and a contact form or whatever and they can apply some full page caching to a traditional site i think that's that's fine that that works great and has worked great for so many years right but uh but these days with um with buzzwords like the jam stack you know and the idea that your website needs to pull data from not only your cms but also salesforce and twitter and instagram and um you know, video hosting services and all kinds of stuff, and then stitch it all all together, uh, and so on. Um, it becomes the more you know, the more complex the site uh, gets, it becomes more enticing in a lot of cases for me to consider the other option. So, yeah, well, that's the brave new world we're <laughs> embarking on training people about. So, yeah. Um, so I think that's all the uh, uh, initial questions we have had, Grace. Um, again, really want to welcome you both to the team, but also to the podcast. So, so listeners stay tuned for, you know, future episodes. It'll be Grace and I, um, and, and guests as, as we have them on and off, um, talking all things, headless WordPress, modern web dev and so on. So mm -hmm. Grace, thank you so much for, for being on and, uh, listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, be sure to catch us in the next episode.